Nati, eh, wa hamba Nati, oh, wa hamba Nati, si amonga, wa hamba Nati, oh, wa hamba Nati, si amonga, eh, o Jesu ye, wa seto. Praise the Lord. We want to greet you on this beautiful New Year's Eve night. Just minutes, less than an hour before we hit 12 o'clock, 2021. I can smell it. It's coming. Just before we get into it, I just want to dance a little bit. See ya, Wong. Hi, Bo. Keep the Lord in praise. Yes, Lord. See ya, Bong. 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 See let's into me so see among a Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to take my scripture reading from the book of Philippians. I'm reading from the Amplified Translation. I'm going to start Philippians chapter 3 from verse number 12 right through to verse number 14. This is what it says. I just want to pick up a few thinking about it from it so that we can explain to you for tonight what it means to share the word of the Lord, our crossover service. Okay. It says, verse 12, Not that I will now have attained or have already been made perfect, but I press on to lay hold of the um, lay hold of grasp and make my own that which for Christ Jesus, the Messiah, has laid hold of me and made me his own. I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made my own yet, but one thing I do, it is my one aspiration, forgetting that what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the supreme and heavenly prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. There are a few thoughts that I want to work with from this text. The first one, the writer seems to be caught between 
what lies behind and what lies ahead. Of course, we know that what lies behind us is 2021, is 2020, I beg your pardon, a year that has been filled and marked and characterized with challenges and problems for every side. Some of the problems that we've experienced in 2020 have a spiraling effect and a rippling effect. One thing affects the other, the domino effect. The economy affects people's jobs. It affected people's incomes. It affected a lot of other things. The COVID-19, because of the COVID-19, it affected every sphere of our lives to a point of redefining life. I'm not gonna go into detail about it, but that's what it has done. It is what, what lies behind us now in terms of what has happened in 2021, 2020. Don't forget that I'm not under illusion that we're still facing some COVID in 2021. I'm going to come to that. But at least that's what lies behind it. And God gave us an opportunity for us to see this day, for us to think and draw lessons from what we have experienced of what we're going through. But the writer also took number one. He talks about what lies behind and what lies ahead. I'm going to talk about what lies ahead. What lies ahead is no less challenges. But the question is what type of people have we become based on the lessons that we've learned for us to deal with what lies ahead. What lies ahead in this text is characterized in two, in, 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 in two sections, in two dimensions, if you don't mind. The first dimension is that he talks about the upward calling, the supreme calling of God, which means the ultimate goal, where we're all going to. But it seems to be talking about little goals leading up to the big goals, making sure that I gain victories in the things that Christ has attained to me. So he has a victory set mindset, he has a winning mindset, but he also has a developmental mindset. The developmental mindset is found in verse 12. It says in verse 12, um, not that I've already attained this ideal or I have already been made perfect. So you're talking about two things, the word being made perfect, which means to come to the full development of, which means character development. I need to develop the character. But he's also talking about having attained, which means achievement which means business performance, which means bottom line for different companies. So you're dealing with, with bottom line, we're dealing with achievement, we're dealing with sales, we're dealing with revenue, we're dealing with income, we're dealing with all kinds of things that can be measured. But on this side, we're talking about the things that can be attained, which means things that I've achieved, things that I can point to that these are achieved. But we're also talking about things that can't be measured and the things that we can't necessarily put a number on. It talks about being made perfect. The word perfect means full grown. It doesn't mean you come to a level where you don't have mistakes, which means you're fully developed. You have fully, your, your, your ability to communicate is developing. Your ability to run a business is developing. Your ability to manage is growing. Your ability to work with people in your department, interpersonal skills is growing. Your ability to keep confidences. There's things that are growing in your character. Why do we always compare the character part and the achievement part, and how you, because the achievement part deals with your skills, it deals with your competences, it deals with your talent, your gifts, okay? Because somebody said, you can't allow, you, you, you can't allow your gifts to take you to a place where your character cannot keep you. So we need to develop the character. It's always a, a, a part of our lives that is a determinant of how high we go and how long we stay at the top. Many people get to the top, but they don't stay there. Their lack of character brings them down. We see some of the people being embarrassed on public television. who have come on national television, other, from, other forms of platforms of media, who have you know, confessed to the weaknesses of their lives and how they've been disgraced and, and they've been embarrassed and they've lost what they used to have. Because lack of character will compromise your going up. And in some, in, in some industries and in some, um, in some department, in some you know, part of life, a little bit of character misjudgment can cost you the rest of your life. So the Apostle Paul is telling us, he says, he then, when we bring the, the full picture, this is what it means. He says, this, this way, I've don't, he says, I don't confess to have been perfect, which means I'm still growing. There's a job that needs to be done in me, okay? So number one, I'm a work in progress. I'm a divine project. I'm God working in me. When you look at me, okay, God is working in me. There are some things that my mistakes maybe I might have made in 2020, but I'm still a divine project. There's some things that some people maybe I might not have treated right. I'm sorry for not treating you right, but I'm working in progress. There's some things that some people maybe I might not have handled correctly. Maybe some things, some business deal or certain things that I might not have handled correctly, but I'm learning, I'm growing. So the Apostle Paul says, don't leave that behind. He says, talk about the character development 
and yet talk about attaining and achieving things. So we're not talking just about achieving things. I'm going to come to that. We're also talking about how we need to develop a, a work in progress. So we understand that as we're coming to 2021, make your personal development your number one goal. Oh my God, oh my God. I like that. Your personal development, you need to grow, develop. On development, which means is, is stepping into new territories of influence and power and knowledge, which knowledge accumulation that you have never had before. That's what we call development. It's learning new skill. It's growing. And part of gaining new knowledge may mean to register in a university, register in a school, get a course going on. And maybe, the, and maybe there's some diplomas that are being offered somewhere. But learn something new, learn new skill. Don't you know that some people are prepared to pay for the skill you're not willing to learn? Because some people are paid on the basis of how much you know and how much you can put into practice. And that's what we call qualification. So you can grow yourself, make yourself the primary project. I need to grow, I need to develop. And, uh, and add upon and add upon an ability to serve, serve other people. Add speed. Not only you do, but do it quickly. Let you have your turnaround. Your turnaround must be quicker. And do quickly. Let people know that if they give you a task, a quick task, you can do it. Somebody taught me a principle in business and said, we as decision makers in business and government everywhere, when we want something quickly to be, for something to be done, to get done quickly, we go to the suppliers that we know they've got the capability to do the work quickly. We don't just give it to anybody. Just make sure that you tell yourself that in 2021, I'm going to be, the, I'll be the, the, the entrepreneur. I'm going to be the startup business. I'm going to be the company. I'm going to be the vendor. I'm going to be the supplier that when he's asked to do something, I'm going to jump. I'm going to have as my competitive advantage, my speed. So I'm going to be known in the industry for getting things done quickly and on time and the right way. So those are kind of things that the Apostle Paul, he says, I've not been made perfect. I'm growing. I'm developing. Those are things you need to work on yourself. An ability to deliver in speed. An ability to deliver better than everybody else in the business. Why should I trust you with my money? Why should I go to you as a supplier? Why should I spend my time um, learning more about what, what, what offerings you have? What should I, why should I ask friends to trust you? Why should I get my influential friends to support your business? You must show why you need to be supported by being good at your work, by respecting people, by respecting your clientele, by respecting clients, and making sure you give a service one cut above the rest of everybody's. You go the extra mile. The Apostle Paul talks about that. You need to prioritize your personal development. Number two, he says, not that I've already attained. Attainment talks about achievement. As I said, it talks about performance. It talks about bottom line, which means it says, keep on achieving your financial targets. Now, Targets mean nothing if there's no goals that are set. So as you begin in the, in the new year, set financial targets. And that is why somebody said, when companies do performance management, they do performance management against set goals. Now, goals in themselves, one writer says about goals, when people are given difficult goals, they show stronger motivation. I like that. So the harder the goals, the more of you they demand. Okay? And so, and that is why somebody said, when people are given weak goals, they give little motivation. I pray to God that may God give you a harder goal to work on. That's going to motivate you. That's going to keep you busy. And sometimes I pray, I don't know who I'm talking to, may God give you a goal that's going to take you out of problems and trouble. That's not going to make you to go with the wrong friends. May God give you a goal that's going to keep you busy for 365 days of the year. That's going to keep you busy thinking. Keep you busy working. Keep you busy praying. Keep you busy fasting. Keep you busy learning. Keep you busy growing. Keep you busy interacting. Keep you busy connecting. Keep you busy trying to get more. Keep you busy pursuing. Because if the goal is big, the motivation is high. So, so, so if you give look a, a less goal, a weak goal, you're more likely to do the thing and then mess around and look around and things that don't work, that aren't gonna help you, that's gonna keep you, that's gonna lend you to trouble. May God. So goals determine the achievement, the attainment what you call the outcomes of the company, the outcomes of your life. So in Apostle Paul says, it's not a sin that when it comes to the end of the year, we must check how much of the things that we need to attend. We must tick. Now I know that in 2020, some of the people's, the, the ticking exercise has been affected because of the COVID, certain things you could not achieve. But do not drop those goals. The, as the Apostle Paul said, it says, let's run for what lies ahead. What lies ahead is going to be what was remaining in 2020 plus the new things in 2021. We've got to achieve that. So you've got to start ticking the, ticking the boxes and say, I've achieved that. I've achieved that. 
I've achieved that. I've achieved it. Now, the most interesting thing about that, which, which I love the most, is that that kind of language of achieving, attaining, is in the Bible. Oh my God. The Bible is called religious things and spiritual things. Many are likely to, to associate religious things with just praying and just feeling and just being spiritual. Oh, it was a nice service. Oh, we had a good church service. When the preacher preached like that, I felt good. But this verse tells me, Christianity is bigger than just feeling good. Christianity is a power to achieve. Oh my God. It's a power to obtain. Oh my God. It's a power to, to perform in business. For you, your life to get better. More money to come in. More clientele to come in. Things that can be numbered. Let's talk about the metrics, different metrics. They say, for people who are in sales, the most important blessings, if you're selling clothes, if you're selling shoes, the, what the greatest blessing that can be is more people who buy your shoes, more shoe buyers. If you're selling clothes, what's the best blessing you can have? It's more clothes buyers, people who buy clothes. So there are measurements, there are metrics in what you have. In what you have. If you're someone who, who, who supplies a service, what's the better blessing you can have? It's more of the people who need your service. Now, there's a, there's a blessing and there's a demand at the same time. Now, listen to this very carefully. You've got no right to take a new job until you invest in a new equipment. You can't lock down one equipment in one job and wait for it and wait to, and make the other client wait for the, um, for the infrastructure to be released here and bring it over. Which means for every job that you take, you must be willing to make an investment. Invest into new, into new, in, 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 into new infrastructure. Make sure that you use certain infrastructure. Employ extra hands. If you, you run, you're selling in a shop, and you've got 10 important clients and you're only one selling and we've got to queue for two hours to get your service, I'm not coming back. So with every decision you have, with every goal you set, when you set goal, assess the infrastructural demands that are associated with your goal. If you're on a goal, the direction, ask yourself the question, will I get there all by myself or I need to have extra hands? And remember, you getting 40 cents out of the rent is better than getting with good infrastructure, good support, is better than getting 70 cents out of the rent and losing five customers. When you start to apply, when you start to work at the top clientele and people that are serious, do everything that you can as a business person, as a supplier, as a supplier, as a vendor, to make sure you keep the business. And you can't just keep the business by doing the business. You keep the business by doing other things with the business that make a statement that I honor you, which means you need to develop character. So we need to have goals. We need to achieve. Christianity is the power to achieve. I pray for you in 2021 that you achieve things. You don't just write down goals. I pray for the anointing, for the power. I join my faith with your faith. May all your goal turn into reality. As, as, as one man said, um, who sang a song, he used to have a particular girl in his mind. He said, get out of my dreams, get into my car. May every dream you have become a reality. May God, and the power of God, may God channelize, channelize success to come your way. May God help you turn dreams into reality. May you, at this time next year, be jumping up and down and say, thank God I achieved that. I achieved that. I achieved that. Not only I achieved that, but my character has grown. I treat people much better. I'm much more faithful, much better. I'm much more reliable, much more better. Everything else is going well in my life. And you'll never get there until you make the necessary decision. You grow your character. You grow your attainment. So these two, they go together. Let me come to the last part, which is very critical that I like in the text. He then says, I play, and, 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 and I like, let me go to verse number 13. I do not consider brethren that I've captured or have made it my own yet. But one thing I do, which was one is my inspiration, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Number one, it says forgetting what lies behind. What does that got to do with anything? Forgetting that lies behind. He says, that's a very important lesson of leadership and it's a very important lesson of, of business. They say an enemy for future business, an enemy for future success is your current success. So in other words, Okay, and then, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some thoughts that I want you to, to capture very carefully. Okay, what got you to where you are is not sufficient to take you where you want to go. In other words, you need to up the game. You see, when you grow in business and in career, you break into new levels of influence. 
you meet people who are much more serious about success than the ones that you met in your life previously. When you step up into people that have money, that know how to make money, they make decisions different from the people who don't have money, excuse my language. When you step into success, you step into people who make now decisions, now decisions. They don't postpone a decision that needs to be made about half a million. To them, half a million is something they make a decision like that. I, I'm, I'm not undermining you. I'm just letting you know how this verse works. Why is the Apostle Paul telling us forgetting the things that are behind? So you've got to make sure that you've got to open yourself up to learn new ways of developing business consistent with the level that God is bringing you in. And make sure that the decision to say, I'll take the project, I'll do it. Let it be something that you can do. And maybe, like some of us, the decision to say, I'll stay up all night, the whole night to do it, let it be quick. If it's got to be done, it's got to be done. I can sacrifice sleep for it. I can sacrifice just lazing around for it. If it calls for me to give in more than I used to do, than I used to do in the past, for me to get to success, I have to do it. He said, that's why he says, I forget the things in the past because if I were to go by the level of commitment of five months ago, I would not survive at the level that God has brought me into. I need to forget it and lie and push ahead for what's lying ahead and make sure I give it, to the, I give it the level of commitment that is there. And that's what you need to do. Learn the new ways of business. Learn the new ways of making decisions. Learn the new ways of the level that God has brought you up to. One of the things that is one of the enemies of success is thinking that you'll always do what you've always done to get what you've never had. <laughs> you can't get to new levels of money if you constantly give a poor level of service. You can't get to new levels of, of friendship, new levels of context. If you're always keeping the context or you're always treating people badly, you don't come back to them. They call, you forget about them. You treat them badly. They're asking for prices. You come back to them two weeks later. You always are making excuses. You're missed and misses excuses. People are going to see that ah, this person is not serious with work. You must turn a new page. You must change how you work. Maybe some of you, you're good in doing what you need to do, but you're bad in communicating. Why don't you invest in having a PA? Why don't you invest in having a secretary? Let the secretary handle all the parts of the communication with people so that they are timely, their own time, your clients feel they are being respected, they are being honored. And that's what we call a SWOT. A SWOT analysis checks your strength and your weaknesses too. And together, you can look at your opportunities and your threats. Do you remember opportunities? There are some opportunities. The law of opportunities says some opportunities, they come once in a lifetime. And you can't miss them. You can't miss the opportunities because you are operating on a level of weaknesses. You must address the level of weaknesses by bringing strength into it, bringing the right kind of, of people to surround you, to help you, to strengthen you. Maybe you're good in managing, but you're bad in relationships. You keep on losing people who work for you. You don't know how to talk to them. Maybe you must invest in somebody. Maybe even they is outsourced. Somebody who does your human resource for you. Who knows how to talk to your people. Who can receive their grievances. Who can have an ear and make people feel they are consulted. People they are spoken to. Before decisions are taken, people are heard. Their feelings are heard. If you are not good at that, make sure that you get somebody who is good at it. Because if you continue in that vein, you're going to lose big time. So Apostle Paul says, I'm stretching forward, for, forward for what lies ahead. He says, this is the part then I want to close up with. It says, verse 14, I press on toward the goal to win. I like that. He says, I press on. He says, there's a bigger goal to win. Now, what have you been doing if there's a bigger goal to win? I, this has been small wins contributing to the big win. I don't know what your big win is. <laughs> Maybe your big win is to be the best in the game. <laughs> but the Apostle Paul says it's possible. <laughs> I don't know what your big win is. <laughs> Maybe your big win is to make sure you, um, you secure two business outlets. <laughs> but now you've got one, the little win contributing to the big win. <laughs> I pray 2021 <laughs> would be a year of big wins. <laughs> May you register big wins. May God grant you the grace to win big. And some of you maybe before we can talk about winning big, your big win is know how to stop gossip and talking other people. Remember in your business you're not allowed to gossip. You need to keep confidences because word comes around. At a higher level when people find out you're talking about them, they're going to close the door for you. Maybe your big win is stopping certain habits. Maybe your big win is start to doing certain things. Maybe your big win is know how to stay up at night and do the job. Maybe your big win 
win is knowing how to respect people. Maybe your big win is knowing how to treat other people right. Maybe your big win is a quick turnaround. Maybe your big win is to register with the school. Maybe your big win is to trust God for money to register. Maybe your big win is to make sure everything next year is in order. Maybe your big win is to separate the bad friends from the good friends. Maybe your big win is to tell this one friend that has always been dragging you down to get out of your life. Maybe your big win is to change business partners. But whatever the big win is, may God grant you the grace. And the Apostle Paul, he says, I press on forward for the big win. He says, I don't wait for the big win to come my way. The big wins don't come your way. You go looking for them, searching for them. Get busy in the kingdom. Never blame God for things that you should have done. You go to go out there, knock on doors, get the taste of what it means for people to tell you, no, we can't do this job for you. No, it's not the right time. Let those no's grow you. But in all the no's, God has prepared for you a big yes. And a big yes is going to come. And I pray for you as you start 2021. It's a year of a big yes. God has said yes and nobody has said no. And I pray for you that you celebrate the big years. I'm stepping into my 2021 with the big years from heaven because he has told me as long as you build your character, as long as you trust me with the goals, as long as you trust me with anointing and the favor to achieve the goals, as long as you keep on pressing toward the mark of the great, the supreme calling and forgetting the poor, the lower level of, of, of the things you did to get the success you did. As long as you grow up, God promises you one thing, I'll make it happen for you. He's going to make it happen for all of us. He's going to make it happen for you and I. And next year, and just in a few minutes, it's a big yes. I celebrate a big yes. If God says yes, nobody can say no. I prophesy over life a big yes from heaven. As a man of God, I speak a shift in matters that concern everything that you do. May the corporate favor, the, the integrated favor that deals with your character, that deals with your achievement, that deals with new connections, that deals with new friends, that deals with new favor, new, and new connections and, 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 and new partners. May it elevate you and may you be seen next year. May you be the first call in your industry when people look for work. May they call you first and the rest. May they ask you first and the rest. May they seek your advice and the rest. May they talk to you first and the rest. May God give you the favor of prominence. The favor of Velela. May you increase and happy new year. Happy 2021. I welcome you with as a man of God with a big favor, with big yes. And when God has said yes, nobody can say no. It's your yes year. In the midst of COVID, it's still a yes year. In the midst of difficulty, it's still a yes year. God is working out for you to make sure that it all comes well for you. Your goals, your character development, your favor, everything is working out for you. And as I pray for you at the beginning of this year, just trust. We have stepped into this year with the big yes from heaven in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity we give you glory and honor. I bless all, Father, the listeners that have been listening and watching this telecast, Father. That an anointing of a big yes comes upon their lives. That as we pursue goals, Father, as we grow, as we develop, that, Father, you're going to help us to come to a level where we experience better things. Bring us into new levels of success, in, increase, and influence, Father. That even those that never thought would get there, but the hand of the Lord would have brought us there. We pray in the name of Jesus. That it was a step in this say it's a year of achievement. It's a year, Father, where you achieve things. We count our achievements or based on our performance, Father. We achieve property, we achieve money, we achieve certain levels of incomes, we achieve the number of businesses. I speak it over their lives. Some Father are being registered at varsity today. Whatever we could not do in the past years, we thank you that this year, that Father, it's a year, it's the time time has arrived. As we exert ourselves for the things that are ahead of us, I thank you Father that your grace is with us. Your grace is covering us. Your grace is clearing us. Your grace is exposing us. Father, thank you that even people that have never heard about us, they're beginning to hear us supernaturally. We're getting calls we never ask for. We're getting business requests we never ask for. All because of your grace, you bring it to us supernaturally. We're getting, Father, for people who are asking about our names, who have heard about us supernaturally. When they were asleep, God visited them and told them about us and told us about our names. We thank you that even our businesses, everything that we do is going to spread supernaturally. People are going to know who to trust supernaturally as they trust us, as business grows, 
And we thank you for your blessings in Jesus' name. We just want to close out with a song. Happy New Year, a New Year song. Love you. Happy 2021. Yeah. We made it. We made it. We made it. We made it. We win Jesus. Oh, as Chablin in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yo, yo, yo. Umusa. 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 Church.